I'm Kevin Atlas, and I'm bringing some of the most successful, most inspirational human beings on this planet into your classrooms. They beat the odds, they overcame adversity, and through that, they found a way to believe. I've partnered with Varsity Brands to provide the answers, the blueprints. I have this heart that bleeds for the youth of this country. So I fight as a soldier for change, and I want us all to learn to lead, and not just to elevate ourselves, but to elevate each other. I'm looking for students nationwide to take action from what they learned from this series. This is how the world changes. It starts with you. When talking about the word success, most people gravitate the thought reflecting their own fortune and achievement. It's easy to fall in that trap striving for a better life for yourself while disregarding the conditions for those around you. There is, however, another interesting perspective on what it truly means to be successful. I will be introducing you to a man who has fame, he has money, he has everything most people dream of. His name, Pat LaFontaine. He's best known for playing in the NHL for the Islanders, Sabres, and the Rangers. Over his career, he scored 1,013 points in just 865 games. He was named one of the top 100 players of all time. This Hall of Famer and five-time All-Stars reputation is so good, the Pat LaFontaine Trophy is awarded to the winner of the Rangers Islanders season series every year. Beyond being a superstar on the ice, Pat is decorated with medals and honors for the man he is off the ice. The Congressional Medal of Honor Society bestowed the Patriot Award on LaFontaine in recognition of his contribution to military morale throughout his career. LaFontaine was also invited to the Vatican to participate in the first global conference on faith and sports as a guest of Pope Francis. The Heisman Trophy even recognized LaFontaine with their Humanitarian Award of the Year. The hockey star joked that he not only never played football, he never even went to college, but the trust recognized him as a selfless individual who gives of himself to improve the plight of the less fortunate and afflicted. What I find most interesting about Pat is his perspective on social awareness and how that awareness fueled the actions that he's taken to elevate humanity. You know, it's funny because uh, getting drafted in the National Hockey League at, at 18 was such a thrill. I don't even know how to put it into words because I actually had to leave my senior year of high school. And I took summer school twice. I took chemistry six hours a day for five weeks and I did government and I actually did a gym class the next year to get in shape to leave to go play junior hockey in Montreal in my senior year. And all my buddies and uh, friends at school were like, what are you doing? This was, you know, 1983. What are you, you're crazy to, what are you going to Canada to play hockey and you're gonna miss out football games on Friday nights and hanging out with your friends? And I said, yeah, yeah, I just love the sport. I'm gonna try to see what happens. So obviously it was a major sacrifice and it was a risk, but in my wildest dreams, did I ever think that it would all come together and then I'd be drafted in 1983 by the New York Islanders third overall. And the irony was when I was 15 years old, I was in front of the TV screen watching the 1980 Olympic team win the gold medal. And every boy and girl after that wanted to you know, fulfill an Olympic dream. And it wasn't long after that the Islanders were playing overtime and my brother and I were doing spring cleaning outside, breaking leaves. My dad called us in and said, the Islanders are in overtime. And we went inside, it was May, I think, 18th, 1980, just after the gold medal Olympics, three, three months later. And all of a sudden, Bobby Nystrom gets a pass from John Tonelli. John Tonelli passes, he tips it in. The Islanders win the Stanley Cup. We're jumping up and down in Michigan. And so I got drafted by the Islanders three and a half years later. And I joined the 1984 Olympic team and got to fulfill and live an Olympic dream, which was an amazing experience. And a week later, I joined the New York Islanders. And my first face off, I looked to my right, and it's Bobby Nystrom. And I looked to my left, and it's John Tonelli. Those were my line mates. The players, when I first started, were a great example of, of giving back to the community. My parents always stressed to do that. And so that was natural for me to want to give back. And, but, but joining the Islanders, it was actually part of the responsibility of getting involved and what ended up happening was this love affair between the community and the players. So that example was set that it's more than just being a hockey player on the ice. It's about giving back. 
but I can tell you that looking back, really, hockey is a stepping stone to what I do today. You know, all those experiences and what I've learned. And for me, the real value of sports is the character development and life skills that it gives you to go on and live a healthy, well-rounded, successful life. And I think in my life, I feel fortunate because I scored my goals when I was young. But in life, to me, it's about the assist. It's about passing the puck to someone else and letting them score the goal. I get more excited now than I ever did in scoring a goal to watch somebody else light up and score their goals in life. And so I think ultimately you get to a place of giving, of service and purpose, and everything prepares you for when that moment happens. And then you realize, okay, this is part of what I'm supposed to do. Everybody has their story, everybody has their journey, and it's what makes it unique and special. And so you know, that's kind of my philosophy. Success doesn't come easy. We all want to succeed and win. However, often our failures lay the brickwork for our successes. Failure teaches us critical lessons that mold and shape who we are. Pat's failures may have been due to injury, but in the long run, they helped mold him into an important way that made him stronger. I looked at slumps as probably the greatest learning opportunities. They're the hardest, and usually the hardest experiences teach you the most. But I just always had this kind of try to figure it out and kind of go back to home base. A lot of times what happens is, is you forget the basics of what got you to where you are. And so when you're in a slump, you got to kind of go back and say, okay, what were the little things? What were the details? What was the focus? And a lot of what you do is what you're feeding into your computer, your head. If you're always putting negative thoughts, you're going to come out and be negative. But if you go back and, and have the simplest positive thinking and then reprogram that computer with positive thoughts and positive visuals, you know, I have a, I call it this real simple gratitude is the aristocrat attitude. If you go back and be grateful for what you're, where you've gotten and you realize the steps that it's taken you, sometimes it's good when you're in a slump to go back to home base. It's amazing how successful you become when you're driven and surrounded by positive influences. It's amazing how great of a person you become when you practice empathy and you seek to take other people's perspectives. You have become a very successful individual. You're an entrepreneur. You're a, you know, a, a Hall of Fame athlete. What would you encourage them to do to achieve their goals and dreams? I would say to kind of look at their life and their experiences. And I would say somewhere along the line is the answer of probably what's going to come next. Have a, have a belief, an inner faith, an inner belief that there are no coincidences and listen to what kind of happens to you along the way and learn from it. I always, you know, I love the movie The Natural. And I think there was this quote in there that says, there's two lives you live, the one that you learn from and the one you choose to live with what you've learned. So it's, it's putting into action what you've learned and a lot of times life is there's going to be a bunch of failures there's going to be a lot a bunch of bumps i honestly think that learning from your failures is the best way to succeed because you gain that experience personally for me i failed so many times but i think that those accumulated into something greater which was the knowledge that i needed to succeed it helped me grow i think you it's it's the road less traveled we talk about but but what's what defines you in the end is what you do with what you have. I mean, look what you've done in your life. You could have chose, you know, the, the old why me, but you said, why not me? And you use it as a platform to inspire others. And so, you know, I think in life, you have to leave it better than you found it. And um, you learn from the adversity in your life and then you apply it into something positive. And then I think it takes you on an interesting path. And then there are gonna be people around you and I, I think relationships and family and your friends, that circle is so important because it, you're not gonna be able to do it on your own. You need a great support system. And I, I feel very blessed that I, I've been lucky to have that in my life. And it all, everything from where I am stems back from being introduced to a sport, being able to play uh, the sport of hockey and other sports. Everything at the core, I was drafted by the Islanders. I met my wife on Long Island. 
My kid, my oldest daughter was born here. My other two daughters were born when I played in Buffalo. Uh, my friends and the experiences, sports took me on this journey. So, so I'm extremely grateful. Uh, it was a privilege to play at the levels I played, but I'm still in contact. I still talk to the guys I played peewee hockey with when I was 10, 11, 12. I think it's every step of the way. There are gonna be people that come in your life you're supposed to learn from. I always believe too, there's three mentors in your life. There are parents, teachers, and coaches. And when you're an athlete, it might be coaches first, teachers, parents, but I, I think we're all supposed to be taught and learn how to teach and give back. And ultimately it's, it's your belief and your faith and your philosophy on how you live your life and uh, your words have to fit your music. That's the other thing my dad used to always say. Your words have to fit your music. Sounds like you had great parents and you had great coaches. Um, and, and to your point, it took a village to kind of raise you and mold you into the person you are today and your successes. But I want to commend you for reciprocating it as well. I mean, not just as a father, but as somebody who's gone out to people that are in need uh, with your charities, people that need that inspiration and encouragement. Pat is a great example. He founded the Companions Encourage Foundation, an organization that builds interactive game rooms in children's hospitals throughout North America. Pat was inspired by a young patient who passed before his time. Pat felt empathy and compassion for children in hospitals who are isolated from friends and family during treatment. That empathy drove him to build a game room so patients could play online video games with their friends from afar. This is a powerful way to help patients who are already going through trialing times to ease the suffering felt from isolation and loneliness. Support networks are important. Rather than demanding others to give support to us, let's focus on finding ways to support others.